All right, I got another video today. Uh, today, uh, this morning, I did a YouTube short on my other channel called Learning the Truth, where I do a bunch of YouTube shorts and stuff like that with, um, you know, with different uh, Bible teachings and stuff like that. It's really hard to do. You're trying to fit all this stuff in like a 16 to 30 to 50 second video. It's really hard to do. But I like to take these videos um, every now and then and actually explain them in more detail on this channel. Now. I've talked so many times about how we have no works today for salvation, and I'm messing up lately. I'm watching YouTube videos of preachers, and they're just they're telling people to do works. They said it's not works and, and things like that, and they're telling people again. They're saying Romans ten thirteen. Now, if you would talk like a Jehovah's Witness, I've read a lot of Jehovah's Witness literature over the decades, and they talk about how it's Romans ten thirteen. You know, call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And I'm going to go through this and show that that's more to Jews. If you read any context and you rightly divide your Bible. Let's read Romans 10, 13. And, and of course, only in your King James Bible. Uh, Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, that contradicts the rest of the Bible then. So we have to rightly divide it. Now, while we're here, let's look down here to verse 14. Of uh, Romans 10, 14. It says, How much then shall they call upon him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And it is written, How beautiful the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings of things, of, uh, uh, bring glad tidings of good things. And that's that quoted from Isaiah 52 7. It says, But they have not all obeyed, or, or obeyed the gospel for SS, which is Elijah said, oh, excuse me, um, not Elijah, Isaiah uh, says, Lord, who shall believe a report? It says, so uh, then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God. And it says, by saying to you in verse 18, have they not all heard? Uh, yes, verily, their sound went out into the earth, and their words into the end of the world. And we see here, let's look at Matthew. I think it's, it's either Matthew 6 or 7, how Jesus says, you know, they worship me with their lips, but in their heart they do not even... In our hearts, they don't, they don't even believe. 6, 13, it's, no, it's uh, 721. Here we go. 721, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. It's, now, that's into the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about, you know, in the context of the great way through the judgment here, about people that never get saved and things like that. He's saying that, let me see, uh, Matthew. I'm looking for that right first. I don't know why it slipped my mind. Matthew 15, Matthew 15, 8 and 9. It said, This people draweth near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their uh, heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching of doctrines, the commandments of men. It says, Well, what are they giving you? Commandments of men. People are saying, Well, I believe in Jesus, trust in Jesus. Okay, we trust, have faith, believe in Jesus, yes. But how do we, how? What do we believe in? We trust in how Christ died. See, you, as we read here in Romans 10, 13, you, it goes on, if people would read a past Romans 10, 13, you would see it's not calling upon the name of the Lord. Now, if we look at Romans 10, 1, we see the context. It says, Brother, my heart's desire and, pre, uh, and prayer to God uh, for Israel that they might be saved. It's really in the context of Israel. And I'm going to show you some verses again to show this. Now, let's look here at Acts chapter 21. Excuse me, Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 21. It says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the very next verse says, Ye men of Israel. So it's in the context of Jews. Again, it's talking like um, in verse 16, uh, Acts 2, 16. It says, But this is that which was uh, spoken by the prophet Joel. Joel, we're going to be there in a minute, but if we read, if you see none of my other videos, we see Joel chapter 2 talks completely and specifically about Armageddon. It's talking about Armageddon there. It even gives you the weather report for the day of Armageddon. It's going to be like a cloudy and, uh, and gloomy looking day and things. In verse 17, it shall come to pass in that in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your son and your young men shall see visions, and your old man shall dream dreams. When is that? That's tribulation. That's for Jews. This is in the context of Israel. Romans 10, 13. Paul starts the, the chapter by my, my prayer is that Israel, the Jews, come to salvation, get saved. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. 
and it shall come to pass who shall, who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is the context here in tribulation. Now, let's run over to Joel chapter 2. If you've never read Joel chapter 2 or read the book of Joel, you've got to read it. There's so much prophetic, prophetic information about end times and about tribulation and about Armageddon because Joel has a lot of information, a lot of detailed information in it. Now let's look over here at Joel chapter 2, verses 20, uh, 28 through 32, and we'll read, It shall so, it so come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now when did you just hear that? Well, you just heard it here in Acts chapter 2. Let's run back here real quick. For Acts chapter 2, and it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that said, and the, and the Bible says in Acts 2, 17, it says it word for word, just in the Joel chapter 2, uh, verse eight, uh, 28. It says, it shall come to pass, afterward I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And we just read that again in Acts chapter 2, verse 17 as well. So these are, have to do with each other, these two verses. And verse 29 of Joel 2 and it says, also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. He said it again. Verse 30, I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. When's that? The great and terrible day of the Lord is the Armageddon. Now, Jesus also speaks of the sun uh, turning darkness and the moon turning to blood. And that's in Matthew 24. 29. Let's look at that real quick. Matthew 24, 29. We know Matthew 24, the majority of that, has to do with end times, future events. Not all of it, but most of it. Matthew 24, what did I say? 24, 29. 24, 29 says this. It says, I'll make one more over. 24, 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the, sun shall, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. He's talking about in tribulation, and this is a future event that Jesus talked about. He's referencing from well, you read also in Revelation 6, 12, and Revelation 8, 12 as well, of what Jesus was saying. And we see Joel talking about it, and Joel is talking about end time events, future time, Joel chapter 2. And it says in verse 31 of Joel 2, and it says, It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Delivered, saved, same thing. It says, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be, um, shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And he's saying here in Zion, in Jerusalem. Who's in Zion and Jerusalem? Jews. You know, so this really has more to do with Jews. Can you call upon the name of the Lord for salvation today? No. Can you do it in tribulation? Yeah, probably. It sounds like it. it. Sounds like you can call upon the name of the Lord in tribulation. And the thing is, though, tribulation is more for Jews to come to Jesus. You know, there's going to be some Gentiles there. Uh, they just never believed, or they believed uh, falsely in a false way of salvation, which a lot of YouTubers that preach do. I mean, I'm, trust me, there's a lot of really good YouTubers out there that preach the truth right, and nothing against them. But there's so many out there that are getting so more views that are preaching a false way of salvation. You want to be careful to look at those because the Bible says you got to know something to be saved, which is the gospel. What's the gospel? First Corinthians chapter 15 verses one through four is the gospel. And the gospel through the King James Bible is the only way to tell you the truth. It's telling you what to believe and how Christ died. How did Christ die for your sins? Of course we know he shed his precious and sinless and innocent blood upon the cross. Because Christ Jesus is so loving and merciful. He says, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to be killed. I'm going to spill my blood to make a blood sacrifice. Because you cannot forgive be forgiveness of sins ever unless it's a, a shedding of blood. Hebrews 9.22. God demands blood for sin, for, for payment. And that payment was made. Do you make a blood sacrifice of an animal today? Of course not. No, that's wrong. You can't do that today. In order to make a blood sacrifice today, you trust in the blood sacrifice Jesus made today. You don't make a blood sacrifice. Jesus made it for you. So you have faith in that blood Jesus spilled upon the cross for a blood sacrifice to you. And if you know you're saved, you, you, want, to, you want to know someone's saved. Walk up to and ask them, how'd you get saved? And they say, I trust in the blood of Jesus for my sins. He made a blood sacrifice. There has been a blood sacrifice made for my sin the blood Jesus spilled for me. I trust in that blood to take me to heaven because that blood's going to wash away the sins from your soul. And we see here, uh, we read in uh, Ephesians 1.13, it says you got to hear the gospel, understand the gospel, believe, and then you'll see what the Holy Spirit promised. If, you didn't make, if there's no blood sacrifice for your sins, there's no faith in it in order to make that blood effective to work, 
That blood washes your sins away from your soul. And then the Holy Spirit will enter and seal itself to you. The only way you're getting the Holy Spirit sealed to you is if there's been a blood sacrifice. Otherwise, there's still sins in your soul and the Holy Spirit will refuse to enter your soul. So, you make a blood sacrifice in order to make that you have faith in the blood of Jesus. So it's all about faith today. And if you're calling upon the name of the Lord, which sounds like it's in the Bible, it sounds like it's more for Jews, it doesn't matter. It still works. Now, if a Jewish person wants to come to and get saved today, they better come through 1 Corinthians 51 through 4, trust in the blood of Jesus. Trust that he died and rose again the third day. That's what the gospel tells us. It's all about faith. There's no works. We do nothing. Just trust in what Jesus did for us. That's all that it is. That's all that it is. And you have to know what to trust in. The blood. The blood atonement. That's how Christ died for your sins. If Jesus was would just say, hey, Lord, just forgive him. Father, forgive him. He's like, nope. Where's that blood? I demand blood. So Jesus says, huh, we got the blood right here. The blood of God spilled upon that cross. Not the blood of man. Sure, Jesus was in a human body, in a flesh body, but that's the blood of God fell upon that cross. Is Jesus Christ God? You betcha. He's God the Son. And that sinless blood fell upon the cross because Jesus never sinned ever. Even in a human body, even by tempted by Satan, Jesus was still sinless perfection. He never sinned. Because if he had sinned once, the blood would have been worthless. God would have never accepted it. God the Father would never accept the blood of Jesus. If he had ever sinned once, Jesus Christ never sinned ever. He is legitimate sinless perfection. What Jesus Christ is. So it's all about that blood. And that's the importance of it. Because if you could have just called upon the name of the Lord, Jesus didn't have to come down here and do that. He could just stay in heaven and say, hey, let me set up a prophet. Hey, you, you're a prophet now. Just tell him to call on my name, and that's it. That's all you would need to do. But Jesus said, no, there's got to be blood for forgiveness of sins. And that's what he did. He spilled that blood for your sins. And it's all about the faith in that blood and faith that he died and rose again the third day. That's how, that's how we get saved. None of this. This makes this a work. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, says that, uh, let me just go ahead and read it. In 2, 8, 9, it says, it's by no works as any man should boast. So we have to understand there's no works. If you try to add works to the gospel, it actually makes the gospel not work. So it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. And if somebody's saying something else, well, I did this or I did this prayer, that's boasting. And we know that boasting is a sin. There's nothing we can say to say, well, I did this. The only thing that you do is believe in something he did. It's all about him. The only way, if you're saved, that you're automatically going to boast about Christ. That's all there is to it. Because if you're saying, Jesus did this and Jesus did that, it's all what Jesus did. Jesus saved my wretched, awful soul from hell. It's what Jesus did. And then you know you're saved because it's all about what Jesus did. It's all about his blood. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, uh, let me excuse me, 2, 8, 9. It says, for by grace we are saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. When you're boasting, you're bragging about yourself. Well, you get, go through one of these or call, Jesus, you know, call upon the name of the Lord, ask Jesus into your heart, or water baptism. You don't, don't do that and watch him boast. Well, I got water baptized. I go to church all the time. I asked Jesus into my heart. I called upon the name. I, I, I. It's not going to work. That's boasting. That's something you did. Who cares what you did for salvation? It's all about what Jesus did. That blood, that precious blood. If there's no faith in that blood, oh, hell, you're going. Oh, hell, you're going. But you've got to trust what Jesus did. I'm just showing you what the Bible says. I'm not making up something. I've actually talked to people recently. He goes, what's this new religion you're talking about? I'm like, what's in the Bible? That's what Jesus said. And they never heard it. And the guys came out these Bible tracts saying, repent of your sins. It's all about repent. Yeah, repent's an automatic action. Feel sorry for it. Change your mind. Turn away. Sure. The, the, the word repentance isn't in the, word, in, in the gospel, 1 Corinthians 51 to 4, because it is an automatic action. You can't tell someone to repent. They're probably not going to mean it. Like, uh, yeah, I repent. But do they? Do you feel bad for your sins? We should. Do you, did you change your mind? Did you change your mind from trusting in a different way, a false way of salvation and trusting in what Jesus did for salvation? That's a repent. That's a change of mind. Like, wait, I was wrong. Oh, the Bible says this. Now I'm right. Now I know what to do. Now I got it right. Well, that's repent. Repent doesn't mean stop sinning. We should not sin and try our best not to sin. Repent doesn't mean stop sinning because you make repent. You say, repent of your sin, stop sinning. Well, then what happens if you sin again? Did you lose your salvation? That's what people are thinking. Now, 
you can't lose your salvation no matter what you do because we'd all want to lost because we're all sinners, sadly. Because if the Bible says if you, if you say you're not a sinner, then you're a liar. We're all sinners until the day of redemption, meaning the day that our, our souls, our soul has been saved from the, at the moment of salvation. Once you get saved, but the day of redemption is the rapture. Or if you die before the rapture and you're saved, then, you know, and stuff like that. But it'll be part of the first resurrection as well. But you won't, you'll have that, that day of redemption, meaning that your body will be saved and it becomes glorified at that point. That'll be over here. I hope I'm praying myself, my family, my friends are raptured. I don't want to die. I'd rather be raptured, you know. But those people that raptured it were saved before the rapture. Their soul went to heaven, but their body's in the ground. But a part of that first resurrection, they're gonna, then they'll get their, their glorified body. They'll, their body will come out of the grave, and they'll be glorified. And they'll get their body back, and their soul will go back into the body and stuff. So it's going to be an amazing time. It's going to be soon. I don't know when it is. I'll pray to rapture soon. But I hope this helps you. I know I've mentioned this stuff before. But I want to keep adding more and more verses to help people understand more and more and more. But I hope this helps you, and I'll talk to you later.